What is cognitive dissonance? Cognitive dissonance is it's that brain fog you feel, the confusion that you feel when you have been in an, a situation where you've been emotionally manipulated. Okay. It is your head and your heart con conflicting with conflicting ideas, with conflicting beliefs, with conflicting thoughts. It's a confused state where you may feel one thing and think another. Okay. It is like, okay, I said, it's like a hazy, unreal feeling that makes you doubt your own reality and also have two different realities going on at the same time. In other words, people all the time, they, they want to be able to leave a narcissist, okay? And as they're leaving or if they've gone no contact or whatever, they're, they're, their mind is saying, I know this is good for me. I know that I cannot have this person in my life. I don't want a toxic person around. This is a really bad situation. I need to stay out of it. Another part of their mind, I like to say it's their thinking mind versus their feeling mind, right? So their feeling mind, their feelings, their emotions, but the, the part of their mind that talks to their emotions is saying, are you sure they're toxic? Oh my gosh, but I love them so much. There's got to be hope, right? Anyone can change, right? If only I loved them a little bit harder. If only I did a little bit more. And at the same time, the other part of your mind is saying, yeah, you did all that. Remember, we did all that, but it's not an argument back and forth like, like on one shoulder, you've got reason and on the other shoulder, you've got feelings. It is literally two parts of your, your mind screaming two different things at the same time. And a lot of people, what happens is you freeze and you shut down. Okay. And, and you shut down and you're unable to make decisions. And so the easiest decisions made, which is very often fall for the Hoover, fall for the lies, fall for the gaslighting, just ignore it because it'll get better for a little while, right? For about five minutes. And then the cycle will continue of the narcissistic manipulation that they've been doing the whole time. So, um, <clears throat> so that is kind of in a nutshell, what, what cognitive dissonance is like when you're in a state of cognitive dissonance, your part of your mind is justifying the thing that just happened. That doesn't seem right. You are unable to accept the feelings that you have, the negative ones, the ones that say this isn't right for you as the reality, because the other feelings of the good feelings feel like a better reality, right? And it's not that you're stupid. It's not that you don't get it. It's not that there's anything wrong with you. This is brought about by a manipulation, okay? And it happens all the time to all kinds of people. So don't think there's something wrong with you or you're not smart enough or you're not good enough if you feel this confusion it's completely normal in a, in a situation when you're dealing with a narcissist and let's talk about why first of all let me let me define cognitive dissonance real quick just break down the words cognitive basically cognitive comes from the latin word for known so it's your knowing Cognitive, cog when we're talking about something cognitively, we're talking about what we know, okay? We're not what we know. It's a knowing. Dissonance is attention from a clash of disharmonious elements, meaning it's a tension between two things that can't be in harmony. Your head knows one thing, you're being gaslit and told something else. There's a total disharmony going on. And, it, and that is where the term like what it actually means, right? So we have a disharmony between our thinking head and our feeling mind, our thinking mind and our feeling mind, right? Totally clashing. And how can we think straight when that's going on? How could anyone think straight when that's going on? You can't. That's the whole point. It works. I don't think narcissists go around thinking, I'm going to put you in a state of cognitive dissonance and keep you there, <laughs> right? I think they do once they know what's going on. Sure, they, they know it creates it and they don't care, all right? But I think it's just the natural effect and why it's so effective so that all they have to do is gaslight you and it works, right? They don't maybe know why it works or maybe they do. It doesn't matter. What matters is you know why it, why it's happening so that you can, when you feel it, learn to step out of it. And we'll talk about that. So stick until the end. If you can, I will have some, some ideas of solutions to help you make sure you, have you ever noticed that when like, say you've left a toxic person or you have the silent treatment going on or something where you're, you're apart from them. And then, and then you start feeling this heightened emotional state 
for whatever reason. You want to reach back to them. You Or you're away from them for a long time and you have something happen that puts you in a heightened emotional state, unrelated even to that person. Have you ever noticed how that's when your brain is more muddled with this cognitive dissonance? That's because that's how cognitive dissonance works. It It is a, it is sort of a byproduct of that heightened emotional state that makes this confusion even more difficult to, to, to see outside of. Okay. And also this whole thing of cognitive dissonance is that it is a defense mechanism. It's an emotional defense mechanism from living in a confusing world, from living in a, a conflicted environment. It's a defense mechanism to keep yourself safe from the things that are going on within the relationship. The problem is once you're away from it, it's no longer needed and we don't know. <laughs> we don't know to let it go. And it's very difficult to let go because you've got trauma bonding. You've got your emotions. You actually care about this person. You've got all kinds of confusing things going in to make it more and more and more huge in your life. Okay. So, so, but there's way, there are ways out and we get out. So have faith. How, how does the narcissist do this? How did this even happen? Why in a relationship where you're just trying to be in love or have a parent or have a friend or have a boss, is this even happening? How and why? Okay. So one thing is the narcissistic cycle of love bomb and devalue, love bomb and devalue. We're going to mix two things, two thoughts here that combined with intermittent reinforcement. Okay. So you got the love bomb and the devalue cycle happening at random times throughout the course of any given time period, right? It's not like at four o'clock, they do one thing at five o'clock, they do another. No, it's just all over the place with timing. So they may love bomb you for three weeks and then devalue you out of nowhere for another three weeks or five weeks or six weeks, and then start giving you breadcrumbs and then love bomb you and then devalue you. And it's all random, right? That creates a confusion. What does that create? It creates a defense mechanism in oneself to people please, to try and uh, make things better, to work on yourself, to blame yourself. All those thoughts that go into this create the conflicting thoughts. There's a bad thing happening. It must be my fault that I should do things to fix it. All of the thoughts that go on there can in contrast to the knowing brain that goes, this person is not being reasonable. They're not being, they're not actually saying anything that makes any sense. They, everything they say feels like a flood of information that has absolutely no basis. What's going on? So your cognitive brain knows that that gaslighting is completely whacked, right? It's like, what the heck is that? Your feeling brain, the feeling part of your mind is saying, well, that doesn't make sense because it must be me because they're telling it at me, it's me. And so it's believing the pieces of you and your feelings are believing the gaslighting. Boom, you go into this state where one part of your mind thinks one thing, one part of your mind thinks another. And then to stay safe, we go numb, we freeze. We, um, we'll go into the signs of it in just a second. But the things that I'll talk about in a minute, the signs of it start to happen. Okay, so let's go on. Another way, well, I just said it, gaslighting. It is setting you up to disbelieve your reality. That's the whole point, okay? That is the whole point of gaslighting. And it, it is a major narcissistic tactic of manipulation. Anytime they need to not take accountability, anytime they want to get away with something, anytime, just for no reason, <laughs> they gaslight, right? So, so when they're doing these things, gaslighting you, projecting, blame shifting, um, love bombing, devaluing, when they're doing all these things, they're not doing it regularly. I just made a video on intermittent reinforcement and how it affects the trauma bonds. It's, it's got a lot of good info. So go check it out because it, it will help you to understand why that piece is so manipulating. Okay. And why it so affects us both in our chemistry of our brain and in our emotions and all of it. Okay. So giving little bits of breadcrumbs, giving the devaluing cycle, all of it randomly in, in no, with no rhyme or reason to it. And then the weird part about it is they will have rhyme or reason every birthday, every Christmas, every this, every that. So it's mixed in with, with 
constancy. And then there's this intermittent, that's confusing. It's super confusing. It really, really feeds into this cognitive dissonance feeling. And you can just see obviously why that would happen. You don't know whether you're coming or going. And so to defend yourself, our brain goes, well, it must be us. So basically one big clue that you are in a state of cognitive dissonance is you've got someone doing something to you that feels unfair, that feels wrong. You're sad, you're hurt, you're being, you're feeling like there's manipulation happening and you're justifying it. That is a huge clue. We can do that for a second, like a hot second through self. So we, we go beyond self-awareness and self-observation, which is important. We need to be able to step back and go, is this me? Wait, what am I doing here? What, what did I, what did I do? And then go, oh, this is so not me. Right. And the problem is you can't because everything's coming at you from every direction all the time with a narcissist. So um, if you are justifying someone else treating you badly, you are probably feeling and experiencing cognitive dissonance. These are signs of cognitive dissonance, extreme self-doubt. It's, you can't, you just, you don't, you don't know. You don't know whether you're right or wrong. You don't, you doubt every move. You doubt every choice, every decision, every, every relationship, your own place in relationship, even with yourself. Okay. Another one is second guessing those decisions. So you make a decision, you doubt it. And then you second guess, I should have done something else. I should have, you know, second guessing, um, constantly apologizing. Yes, this is also a trait of codependency, but sometimes codependency is partially because you're living in such a state of cognitive dissonance because maybe you had toxic parents and you've been in a state of cognitive dissonance your whole life, right? So working on this piece can sometimes help that sometimes the going at the constantly apologizing and just stop doing it and using I have a thing where instead of saying I'm sorry say thank you thank you for waiting thank you for being patient thank you thank you for the thing I'm acknowledging that I did if you did it and if you didn't do anything don't apologize it will feel really uncomfortable because you are in this cognitive dissonant state of mind where you doubt yourself and think you know other people are are okay, you're wrong when actually sometimes it's the other way around, <laughs> right? Um, but it, it, it helps you to see things differently. So anyway, keep going. Another thing is going back to a toxic partner, parent, boss, whatever it is, going back to that person over and over again, when you totally know with your mind what's been going on, when you totally know that you have been manipulated, you're being gaslit, all of that, and going back when you've been hoovered, You've been hoovered and you want to go back and you are experiencing cognitive dissonance in that moment. That's what it is. It is partially your trauma bond. Besides just the trauma bonding, you're in a state of cognitive dissonance if you are going back, if you're falling for a hoover. Because that's exactly the point of the hoover, right? Misplaced hope. This is kind of similar. We have a misplaced hope that this other person, this toxic person will get better. <sighs> You know, after a certain amount of time, and it doesn't take that long, you can realize people aren't willing to change. And your mind knows it. You can see it in other people when you read on boards, when you're in group, like people in the group coaching see it all the time and listening to other people, right? But in themselves, well, there must be hope for this one, right? Indecisiveness, kind of talked about that already. Feeling something is wrong with you. You're the problem. Sure, once in a while we might be, but most of the time when we're talking about this type of a relationship with a narcissistic person, you've been taught to believe you are in the wrong. That is a form of gaslighting that sets up a cognitive dissonance about what you know about yourself to be true and what you think about yourself and how you act. Totally, um, totally manipulated into believing that. You're in a state of cognitive dissonance if you think you're always wrong. Something's totally wrong with you. OK, um, you OK, this is a big one. And I talked about it a little already. You recognize the lies. You recognize the manipulation. You recognize the toxic person. You recognize you even go so far as to label narcissist. OK, label meaning we can't diagnose them. We are not professionals who can diagnose and we are not talking to that individual person if we are. OK, so 
assuming we are labeling narcissism, you see everything, you recognize it. And at the same time, you start justifying it. Well, they had a hard childhood. Well, I can see why they would act this way because, well, I did do this and that. Well, that other person did do this or that. Well, they had no choice but to blah, 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 right? So yeah, you, you recognize it and you justify it. We all do it when we are talking about narcissists. So that means we are in a state of cognitive dissonance. Okay, you guys, when you know you're there, don't trust your heart. It's a time, it is not a time to say trust your gut because your gut is all mixed up with, well, you can't even get to your, when you say trust your gut, I'm talking about intuition or, or that deeper knowing, okay? But do you hear what happens to the deeper knowing? The deeper knowing is kind of tied to the cognitive. It's kind of tied to the ability to step back and see the big picture. When you are in this, you are so close, you cannot see past it, right? It's right here. You can't see past it. You are, you're in it. You're feeling it all. And you're, you, when you feel this conflict, a way to work with this, we're going to talk about how to help. There's a lot of ways to help. This isn't a quick fix. This isn't comfortable. And this isn't like, oh, I get it. And you walk away and you feel better. Okay, this is effort on your part. This is knowing you're going to have to go through breaking those trauma bonds. And you're going to have to you're going to have to struggle with yourself a little here because two parts of you are saying two different things. Okay. So I think looking at what is best for you, you can talk to a good friend. You can talk to a therapist. You can talk to a coach. Okay. Group coaching is great for this because you have a bunch of people feeling the same thing or similar things. Plus me to help you listen to yourself, help ask you the questions you need to hear or hopefully need to hear, right? To be able to listen to your own head, to your own heart and separate the two. And um, not to be told, no, you're right, no, you're wrong, but like to really have thoughtful questions personally asked of you so that you can learn to see yourself. Oh, I get it. I see. Okay. I got it. Right. So if you don't have that, if you don't have a, a sounding board or someone to turn to, then journal it. Journal what you're feeling on one page and what you're thinking on another and really look at it. Really look at it is like, say, say someone hoovers. Let's take that as an example. So say someone is hoovering you and part of you is going, well, it really wasn't that bad, was it? Because that's a cognitive dissonance thought. It really wasn't that bad. And the other part of you is going, oh my gosh, do you remember the stuff they did? Go back and read your list of all the bad things they did. And you go, yeah, I did. I read that. But I still, I still think maybe because there's been like, a year between that this person's gone to therapy or something and they've changed. And so you're talking back and forth to yourself like this and you know, okay, I am not, I, I don't want to go back there, but you're pulling me back there, me, <laughs> right? And the other me is saying, wait, I don't want to hear those things you're saying. I know, I know, I trust, I feel, I feel it'll be better. Okay. At this point, when you know there's cognitive dissonance going on and you know, it's related to something that was bad for your life, stop. If you don't have someone to talk to, journal it. This is what I think. This is what I feel. Look at what you think a little harder. Listen to that person. Listen to the part of your brain that is telling you how to stay safe. It is not paranoid. It is not delusional. It is not uh, a confused place. When you look at the things that have happened from this manipulative narcissist and just look at that and you take away how you feel about them, just look at that. Is that a kind of person you want to feel this way about? Another thing that can help is mindfulness. Take each day to do some mindfulness practices, whatever that means to you, whether it's meditation, slow, long, leisurely walks where you observe things, um, art, creativity, whatever it is that helps you be present to the present time, present moment, and be and just be yourself for a few minutes. Get out of the thinking and the feeling and the processing for at least 15 minutes twice a day, okay? And that can help you see more clearly. Change the scenery. Get some distraction for a little while, whatever you need to do. Mindfulness and distraction, two different times of day, you know, finding a little distraction. Go play a sport. Go sing. Go dance. Go do something active or... Go change the scenery if you're not an active person. Go go to drive somewhere and look at something different. Go to a grocery store. Go do something, right? So that can help get you back in a more clear space in your head. 
don't make decisions about a narcissistic person when you're activated and emotionally heightened. When you're feeling that emotionally heightened feeling, you are trauma bonded. You are in a state of cognitive dissonance, wrong time to be making a decision. The reason you feel like you can't make a decision is because quite frankly, in that moment, you can't. Okay. <laughs> and so you've got to step back, calm down, get your brain back online and, and start being able to make reasonable decisions from a place of understanding and reason versus this conflicted feeling. Okay. Self-love and self-care really, really important. And all of these things I'm talking about kind of are that, but finding, if you're finding you're there, you're not in a, you're not in a place of self-care. You're in a place of confusion. And it's very, and so giving attention to yourself, bringing the focus back on yourself, bringing the love that you have back towards yourself versus out toward the toxic people can help you learn to, um, to carry yourself so you're prepared when you're feeling these this cognitive dissonance. And then the very last thing I'm going to say is boundaries. So once you got all this in place, boundaries, when you're dealing with anything related to narcissists, is kind of the tool we have for keeping ourselves safe. Boundaries are important. They are what is the line. So when we're in a state of cognitive dissonance and where we're like, I'm so confused, I don't know what I should do. I feel this. I think that. I don't know if it's me. I don't know if it's them. I don't know what's happening. I'm in a fog. The boundary's there. And you're like, wait, that boundary. I placed that boundary when I was feeling pretty strong. Why am I way over here? I need to come back to that boundary. So it's a line not only for the narcissist not to cross, but for you not to cross in order to, it's a boundary with yourself. That's not to say you can't push on things that make you uncomfortable in life and learn and grow from them. But when you're dealing with a toxic person, no, boundaries are, are super important. If you need anything like coaching or group coaching, please check out the info in, in the description of the video. We have a group coaching program kind of unique and that in that it is as low cost as we can make it. And you actually get individual coaching within the group. And it, it is, I monitored this to keep it safe and to keep it um, moving, <laughs> right? So that people are, um, and, and, and that it doesn't matter who the narcissist is in your life, there should be a way to talk and feel heard and feel validation um, within that group for most people. I'm Lise Colucci, and I am one of the life coaches over at queenbeing.com. You take care, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.